Greetings, everyone. My name is Chris Boylan. Um, I was the CG supervisor for AMC's uh, original animated series, Pantheon. And uh, today we're going to be diving into uh, something a little different. Um, we're going to take a deep dive into some rigging that we did um, for one of the main characters of the whole show. So um, for a lot of you who may have been watching in America or, um, you know, who don't, have access to the uh, season two stream that's only available apparently in New Zealand and Australia. Um, we introduced a um, a new character in season two called Mist, and Mist was an entirely CG um, robot, and uh, this was uh, this was a very exciting uh, situation for us. Uh, again, you know, as I've spoke about in previous videos, um, as our teams continually proved that we could handle uh, what we were what we were doing that we could handle integrating um, assets and scenes and generating backgrounds and all the stuff that went into um, you know building that goodwill towards the internal CG department for season one um, the director started to find the idea of keeping this character entirely in-house more appealing and uh, you know there was an immense amount of work to do um, this character features heavily over the course of season two, starting from, I think, the second episode on. And there's uh, two different forms uh, that she takes, uh, her virtual form, where she appears as this, like, floating diamond type uh, thing, which is which represented its own uh, challenges for animation because there's no facial uh, features. There's no limbs to gesture with. It's all literally just a floating di diamond. It's almost like trying to animate a, a floating ball, right? And then her second form, which is the one we're going to go over today, which is this little um, robot made out of like a rice cooker, essentially. So as the CG supervisor for Pantheon, um, my role basically spanned the entire pipeline. Um, I was, uh, you know, in charge of creating assets. I, I generated backgrounds, um, animated uh, characters and, and uh, you know, CG assets, and uh, also, you know, had to supervise this department uh, that kept growing over the course of production uh, I think at the height of our, our uh, at the height of our department we had uh, I think about five or six people working um, in the CG department for the entire show right and uh, our workload got pretty heavy especially later on in season two um, but one of the nice things about that was I was able to kind of hone in on the pipeline itself and how um, you know, how I wanted things executed, right? I was able to control essentially like the input and the output and the throughput of all the CG assets. So today we're going to, we're going to look at, uh, the rig I built for Little Robot Mist and, uh, let's dive into it. So here we have our Robot Mist rig. Um, you can see she's, uh, cell shaded. I used the, uh, pretty straightforward, um, go to object mode. I'm going to lock object modes here and then that way I can switch between them. Um, this is essentially, what, this is the shadow, okay, nice. This is just a three, a three light linking setup. Same as any other cell animation where I'm using the red, green, and blue values of the lights. You can see this is a red light uh, to link the lights together. Um, so here's our, our mist rig. It's uh, pretty straightforward, um, IK only. Um, I didn't do any fancy FK, IK switching. I'm, it, my preference is to keep the rigs as light as possible. I prefer to just animate with straight IK um, in most instances. So um, you see here we have our, our mover, which for some reason is moving the floor. Oh, that's right. This shadow catcher came along with her. Right, 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 right. Yeah, there we go. The shadow catcher, so my, my thought process behind that was um, essentially importing a shadow catcher object with each rig would give us a ground shadow that she automatically had. Um, and then I can separate that out into passes, obviously, um, for rendering. So we got this here. She jumps. In, in certain instances where she actually had to jump, we had to um, unhook the shadow catcher object from the actual, uh, from the actual mover. Um, so I either removed that constraint, turned it off, or um, just replaced the shadow catcher object with a different, with a different uh, thing. You can see here, um, it might be a little hard to see, but 
when we grab her on her, her y-axis, the wheels rotate. So that's automatic um, based on her, her y location. Um, I probably could have done something a little bit more slick, but really, she's so small. Usually, when she's in camera, she's only about this big, um, and so you you, you didn't you don't really notice that it's there, but it is there. Um, pretty much uh, just standard, really easy. Um, because because her her legs were basically just um, they were hinge joints, right? I didn't see the need to control to add in um, controls for the uh, the pole vectors because I felt like it was easier to just, you can see that it, the only place that it pivots is up at the top here, right? Up here. That's the only place that it had any sort of a, a ability to um, pivot. Um, so I, I just I just took that, that choice completely out of the equation. There is technically a pole vector on this. Um, but I, I left it, uh, let's see, where is, yeah, there we go. So these, these should be the pole vectors here. Yeah, and you can see. Yeah, so that's essentially uh, what I had to do here. Because I had to, I had to um, you know, this is a pole vector, and then this is like an aim constraint for the leg, right? For the upper part here. If I, if I hide this, you can see. This part here is actually looking at, this front vector, and then this is the pole vector. Um, and you, you, I put the pole vectors on the side um, because you, let's see, you should be able to just roll the leg over top and it won't flip, right? But be, because of uh, some of the automation here, it, it kind of looked a little wonky, but essentially that's the, the, the idea. If you put a pole vector on, you know, immediately back from where the base of it is, like for example, if your elbow pull vector is behind your shoulder, um, you can actually pull that shoulder all the way up. Uh, and not only will the elbow not point down at the pull vector, the elbow will, will stay pointing back, um, but the shoulder won't flip. The pull vector won't actually flip. Um, so you can just pull the, uh, pull the limb over top of itself and it, it won't flip. And then you, you have this uh, ability to, you know, if you're smart, you set the pivot at the shoulder and then you just rotate the pole vector instead of actually moving it around. Um, and it's a really clean way to um, essentially, um, what's the word? Like, it's a really clean way to control like where your elbow is, fa is facing without having to manage, um, you know, where the pole vectors are in space and, and constantly having to keep track of that. You can just parent it right to the shoulder and, uh, and, and have that work automatically. So let's just hide this layer here. Go back to shaded mode. So it's it's a really straightforward rig. Um, just just you know your your basic stuff here. The feet controls. You know this stuff goes up and follows through. So it's it's a not super complicated IK chain, but it's not your normal like two bone with a pole vector. Um, here is the pivot for the head. You can go all the way around, easy breezy. And then I added a, a squash and stretch on this as well. I just I just wanted a little a little bit, you know, if we if we needed to have a smear or, or something like that, I just wanted a little bit of uh, extra extra, you know, um fun here to you know, if she's falling, we can kind of stretch her out a little bit and then, you know, pose her pose her in the right way. These IKs are all popped, but you know what I'm saying. I would I would have fixed the IKs and actually posed the legs, but this is uh, you know, just just the standard easy and uh, the one the one thing I, I will say about this um, I would have liked so we were lucky in the fact that like when this when this asset was uh, generated essentially what had happened was the designer modeled the the character right the character designer actually modeled this <laughs> this asset in blender so I was able to inherit that, but um, you know, if I select it and just turn wireframes on, so she's pretty heavy, first of all, and um, you know, she's she's got bevels where she needs to have bevels. You can see that this has obviously been subdivided and then frozen. Um, but you know, for example, I would have liked to have been able to go in and maybe add a bevel to this 
and just clean up some of the geometry here. Because um, some of it's beveled, some of it's not. And you can see, um, you know, we actually we actually had some issues with, uh, you know, the shadow popping. Pop, 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 pop. So I had to, uh, I, you know, and then also you can see how it kind of flat and then pops up. So we had to we had to take some efforts, you know, staging the lighting in a way that wasn't going to create a lot of pops, but then also how we posed her and how we moved her around. Um, the more the more you um, the more extreme her movements, the the more apparent or the more opportunity for shadow popping there was and. Uh, there are a couple shots where I even had to just turn the shadows off and just paint them on the model because they were just popping so much it was so distracting. Um, so that was something that we we handled um, in that way. Her face is uh, pretty interesting. Um, I can I can turn the uh, the rig visibility on so you can see. So I essentially uh, just rigged her entire face with uh, bendy bones and also animation constraints. So you can see here this this is a um, a poly strip her mouth here. And essentially, it's just like if we isolate this here, it's literally just this. It's a subdivided um, capsule. And what I what I ended up doing here was um, I put a bone on each vert and posed it to to get the shape that I wanted. So, for example, if we pop into pose mode here and let's just uh, let's open up the asset shelf something about the asset shelf um, I, I should note here is that because this asset was created in uh, blender 3x series uh, for whatever reason when we uh, when I upgraded to four um, my pose library here is doubled I don't know why that is but in any case that uh, you know that's going on right now um, so just keep that in mind uh, I'll have to go back and make sure that uh, when I set up future pose libraries, they're, they're set up uh, in a way that's not going to have double expressions. But you can see here, if I pop this on, that the essentially the the uh, pose is just popping into shape. So you can see here, yeah, that's very gross, right? Um, the nice thing about yeah, you can see I just I just I got art. I put it in the scene and I matched the poses, um, and then I just mirror. I would mirror the pose, and then store that as an action, right? Kitty cat mouth, right? <laughs> so the nice thing about this setup um, is that because Mist herself wasn't going to have lip sync, and because the poses weren't going to interpolate, we were able to pop from one pose to the other, right? And just give her her expressions here. See? Yeah, she's like, ooh, -hoo -hoo. she's like blushing and bashful. Or is she sad? She's a sad cat girl. No, she's just like, mm, come on. Oh, she's so offended. Um, and Mist became a really fun character. I mean, I feel like, you know, Part of the shame of the show being canceled before season two was that she has a lot of great moments in the show, um, and there are, there's a lot of great opportunity for character acting with her, even though she's just four legs and a and a and a barrel, right? Um, there's still a lot of stuff that that we were able to do. Um, there we go. Yeah. There was a lot of stuff we were able to do with her. And I was really happy, again, with the work that we all put in. Um, she's, you know, she just turned out to be such a great character. And I hope that, I hope that, you know, you can, you can find a way to watch the show. Or, you know, if you have Amazon in New Zealand or Australia. Because, um, yeah, she was a really standout kind of character. And it was one of those, like, you know, when... We were all having a great time animating her, and I think somebody on production remarked kind of like that she she felt like a, sh a show stealer, um, and that was that was a really big compliment for me to to just hear people like really excited about the performances that we were putting in and, and this character in general. Um, I think she's really great, and uh, yeah. So once this rig was complete, I was I just packaged it up and uh, 
set up layout files for the animators. Um, as I as I assign shots, basically, I would get the layout set up for them, um, get it all render ready, um, and then kick out layout files for the animators to start start doing their shots. Um, and uh, we we you know we got this pipeline working uh, really nicely and really efficiently. Um, pretty pretty quickly and uh, it, it was really nice to see everything just come together um, so with that um, I'd say that's that's it for this demo video if you have any questions please feel free to leave them in the comments uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you're not already subscribed to the channel and uh, till next time sayonara